Okay, so assalamu alaikum formally, and uh, let's continue the topic project and motion. So let's begin the class. Uh, what are we going to do today? Very brief revision as usual. Then we will see that how can we derive equation for the time of flight of a projectile. Then we'll focus on range and maximum horizontal range of the projectile. Okay, so very brief revision. What is projectile motion? A two-dimensional motion in which the body not only covers the horizontal distance, but also vertical distance. So in this diagram, you can see the body is going up vertical distance and the body is also traveling the horizontal distance. So it's a two-dimensional motion. So how can we define it? We can define it by uh, that is a horizontal movement of a body under the influence of gravity. Horizontal movement of a body under the influence of gravity. Right? Okay. It's a two-dimensional motion, as I told you. This is practically, you can see over here, that if you throw a ball like this from a tower from a from certain height, then it, is, it will also show uh, projectile motion. So either you throw a stone or a ball in the air, it will show. Uh, projectile motion or with the uh, with certain height like like a tower like a table if you hit something it will also show the projectile motion as you can see over here one of the uh, sphere is moving uh, parabolically showing projectile motion whereas the other one this one is uh, showing with the vertical motion okay so a combination of horizontal vertical motion is called projectile motion nothing is new for the old ones. And what else you have to remember that when you throw something into the air, uh, then its velocity is divided into two components, the horizontal component and the vertical component. The vertical component will uh, decrease slowly. Why? Because of the attraction of earth, right? Whereas the horizontal distance, uh, horizontal velocity uh, will remain constant because there isn't any opposing force, right? So in this uh, diagram, you can see over here that point number one, uh, there is some vertical velocity and there is uh, some uh, horizontal velocity. Due to the attraction of the earth, the vertical velocity decreases at, at position number two, whereas the uh, horizontal component remains constant. Further, at point number three, it has uh, the vertical velocity becomes zero, means the body, the projectile will not go up further or rather it will start its downward motion. So at point number four, the body is coming down. So its vertical velocity is increasing now. The uh, horizontal velocity remains constant, increasing, increasing, increasing. And just before hitting the ground, just before touching the ground, its uh, vertical velocity would be maximum again. And the horizontal component remains constant, right? What else? So this is the summary. The, whatever we, you have just revised, horizontal component, Vx, V naught cos theta, or simply V cos theta. The horizontal component remains constant. No opposing force is acting on it. That is why there is no change in its value. Whereas the vertical component, it first uh, decreases, then it increases, right? Now the topic of projectile motion, uh, as I told you, um, beside, write a note on projectile motion. There are four expressions, there are four derivations that is included in, our, in the syllabus. So the first one we have done yesterday. What are those four expressions? Means we have to find an expression, an equation, if we want to find out the maximum height. That uh, suppose uh, something is being thrown, something is being projected into the air, then we can find mathematically at, uh, the, at what height it would reach. It could be a missile, or it could be a shell, or it could be a bullet. It could be anything like this, okay? So mathematically, we can find the height reached by a projectile by using equation 2s is equal to vx square minus vi square. This we have done yesterday, okay? So today, what will we do? We will find out an equation, time of flight. What is time of flight? Time of flight means uh, uh, it's the time uh, during which a body, a projectile remains in air, either it goes up or it goes down, right? 
the total time of uh, its total time of flight uh, we'll consider over here then there's an equation range range means horizontal distance covered maximum horizontal distance covered and then another equation trajectory that we'll do on friday it's a friday's topic either you come or not if you will not come on friday i will not repeat this okay so what we did yesterday expression for the maximum height by using uh, 2s square 2s is equal to b square minus bi square and this motion since height so we consider the vertical part the vertical part of the velocity what which is the vertical part of the velocity v not y what is v not v not is the initial velocity its vert its vertical part is v not y or v not sin theta so during this vertical motion we consider v not sin theta right and the data you can see over here initial velocity means the velocity that is uh, considered uh, that is uh, considered over here is v not y its value is v not sin theta since the body will reach to certain height and will uh, at that point its velocity will become zero means its final velocity becomes zero right that is why it is written over here uh, that vf is equal to zero and since the body is going up a is equal to minus g right and we have to find the horizontal distance we have to find the horizontal distance that is why it is written question mark over here substituting these values over here substituting these values over here we can get the equation right minus 2gh is equal to 0 right so we just solving it and we get the value of h h is equal to v not square sin square theta upon 2g so this is the formula this is an expression to find out the maximum height of uh, a projectile right so this is in uh, in use extensively used by uh, different departments like uh, in in um, um for the for throwing uh, missiles or cannons or uh, in games rather right so for example if you means you will use this formula directly or indirectly suppose you want to do long jump or high jump rather i'm sorry high jump then indirectly you will be using this formula this formula h is equal to v not square v not means v not square means initial velocity so the with the uh, when you jump the uh, height of the jump will depend on the initial velocity and the angle the theta is there if these two things are greater the height will would be reached to a maximum extent right and g is an uh, g is the attraction of the earth that is why it will reduce the height that is why it is inversely proportional over here so this is the basic formula all right now let's see today's topic derivation for the time of flight so let's continue <clears throat> so what is the time of flight i told you just now that when you throw something in, into the air then how long will uh, uh, how long would it be in air that is called time of flight right so that is why you can see the definition over here the time during which a projectile motion during which a projectile motion continues its flight into the air is called total time of flight of the projectile and it will go the ascent time means uh, the time reaching to the maximum point and the descent point uh, descent time uh, from the maximum point to the ground so that is why it's mentioned over here the total time of the flight is the sum of time of ascent and the time of descent all right see the diagram if there is a body and uh, it takes 4 seconds to reach the maximum point then 4 more seconds would be required by it to reach to the ground again so the same time 4 seconds up 4 second down total time, total time it would be 8 seconds clear so suppose if t is the time to reach to the maximum point as you can see over here in the picture downward picture that is from point a to point b then same time 
would be required to uh, to travel from B to C. I repeat, if you throw something into the air projectically, then let's suppose it reaches from point A to point B in time T, then the same time would be needed to cover from B to C. So the total time would be T, small t is equal to t plus t. Okay. T plus t. So the total time is t is equal to 2t. So what are we going to do? We'll find the time from point A to point B. And then in the last, we will double it. We'll form an equation to find uh, the time from point A to point B, right? And uh, you can see over here that we are going to find out the value of T, the time required for upward motion. For the vertical motion of the projectile from A to B, we have some data over here. And what is that data? As I told you, we'll consider the vertical component of the velocity, the initial velocity is equal to V naught Y. V naught, what is V naught? V naught is the initial velocity and its component is V naught sine theta. And since the body is approaching towards the maximum point where it uh, final velocity would be zero. So that's why I wrote over here that final velocity at point B would be zero. And the value of G is uh, negative since the body is going up you know, during its motion from A to B. And what are we going to uh, find? We are going to find the value of T, the time required to reach this point. Clear? Okay. So in this derivation, we will use first equation of motion. What uh, you remember? Vf is equal to Vi plus AT. That's, uh, so v, Vf is equal to Vi plus AT. All right. Substitute the values, the value of Vf is zero. The value of Vi is V naught sine theta. The value of A is minus G and the value of a small t is capital T. We have just substituted the values, nothing else. Now open the brackets. So it will become zero is equal to V naught sine theta minus GT, all right? Transferring minus GT to the left side, it will give you this form of the equation gt is equal to sine theta, v naught sine theta. And since we are interested uh, to find out the time, so g should be transferred on the right side. So it has become v naught sine theta upon g, right? So we have an equation to find out the time required by the projectile from point A to point B, all right? And if we want to find the Total time, just double this value. Just double this value. It's multiplied by two. It will give you the total time. So in the next slide, what will we do? We will find the total value. So this is the equation you can see that was there on the last slide. Is the time for half from A to B, half path. The, the, thus, the total time of flight t is given is the double of it. t is equal to 2t. Sub substitute the value of t. What is the value of t? We know sine theta upon g. Open the bracket, and finally, we got the equation t is equal to 2 v naught sine theta upon g. So, this is, a this is the formula uh, that can be used to find out the total time of flight. I repeat. Suppose uh, a missile is being fired at certain angle, we know the angle and we know the, its velocity, then we can find that how, after how many seconds or minutes it will hit the target. It could be a ballistic missile or it could be a short range missile or it could be even a cannon. You can find out that how much time would it be needed to hit the target. Then here are the four equations. Expression for the range and maximum horizontal range. 
okay? Uh, range, just told you, when you throw something in the air, then the distance covered by it horizontally is called range. And if you consider how far it can go to the maximum extent, then it would be called maximum horizontal range. So what is the definition written here? You can see the horizontal distance covered by the projectile during its entire motion is called its range, right? A cricketer hits a ball for a sixer. Then the maximum distance covered by the ball in the air, that would be called its range, okay? As the air resistance is negligible during the motion of a projectile, hence the horizontal component of the velocity remains constant. Just told you, just briefed you. Remember, there are two components of the velocity, horizontal and vertical. Since we are talking about horizontal distance, the range, so we'll focus on the horizontal component of the velocity. We'll not consider the vertical component. We'll consider only V naught X or V naught cos theta. So here it is mentioned, the V naught uh, x will remain same. What is V naught? Initial velocity. What is V naught x? Horizontal component, which is equal to V naught cos theta. Let's start. So how can we find uh, range? Just told you in the first lecture of the projectile. Range means distance, right? Uh, recall your memory, basic formula of physics, S is equal to V into T. Distance is equal to velocity into time, right? Here S means range. Velocity means horizontal velocity. T is the time that we have just found out, okay? So that is why I showed it over here, that range is represented by R. Velocity, which velocity? Velocity along X axis, V naught X, and T is the time. And we already have uh, the values of these two parameters, V naught X, we already know that V naught X is equal to V naught cos theta, and that uh, T, the time of flight, we have just, uh, uh, we just did it yesterday, and just revise this right now. So here are the two values from your previous information, that the V naught X is equal to V naught cos theta, and T is equal to T V naught sine theta upon G. So what will we do? We'll substitute these two values in equation number one. Okay. I'm pausing here for a few seconds. If you have any question ask in the chat group. All right. All right. So we have started that a projectile is thrown into the air with velocity V naught. We have to find its range. We will consider the horizontal component of the velocity. How can we find range? Range is equal to velocity into time. We, uh, we have the values of V naught X and T. We'll substitute these two values in the basic equation, R is equal to V naught X into T. So let's see what is next. So since the values of V naught T and V naught X in equation number one, we get on the right side, you can see the values. And here we have substituted V naught cos theta and two V naught sin theta upon G. And we can see that here we have two V naught. So V naught V naught V naught square and two sin theta cos theta. Right, leave the equation here with the name equation number two. Now, uh, if you recall your memory, you have done in your math class some formulas, uh, trigonometry rather, like sine square theta is uh, sine square theta plus cos square theta is equal to one, right? Or one plus tangent square is equal to this is equal to that. Similarly, these are called identities. Similarly, we have a formula in trigonometry in which two sine theta cos theta is equal to
this 2 sin theta cos theta is equal to sin 2 theta. It's a formula that you have to remember. What? What is the formula? 2 sin theta cos theta is equal to sin 2 theta. So what will we do? We will substitute this value by sin 2 theta so that the equation will re be reduced. We will not write 2 sin theta cos theta, but we will write sin 2 theta so that the equation will become V naught square sin 2 theta upon G. So proceeding further, again taking uh, the information from mass, sin 2 theta, you know that sin, cos, tangent have different values. So the maximum values of sin 2 theta is 1. Okay, see, remember one thing, equation number three. Equation number three will give you the value of range, right? For example, a cricketer is playing, he saw that the boundary is at this much distance, then it will apply the force accordingly for a success, right? Similarly, you are throwing short put and you have uh, seen that your competitor, uh, your partner uh, has thrown the short put up to this range and you have to throw the short put up to that range to win, right? This is called range. Now, if we want to know that at what angle the cricketer, the hitter should hit the ball with the bat so that it go as far as maximum Okay, what are we going to find? That at what angle uh, the short put, the long jump, the long jumper uh, should go so that it will, it, uh, it will, uh, it will reach to a maximum horizontal distance. So what is the task now, right now? At what angle, right? So the range of the projectile becomes maximum if the value of sine 2 theta is also maximum, which is 1. So this range would be maximum if sine, theta, sine 2 theta is equal to 1. So we'll substitute the value of sine 2 theta is equal to 1 over here. If we substitute sine 2 theta is equal to 1, then this range will become horizontal maximum range. And equation number 3 can be reduced to R is equal to V naught square into 1 upon G. Okay. So what we did here, we have got an equation for the range. But we want to know that uh, how can a projectile can be thrown to a maximum distance? How can a missile, a ballistic missile, a shell can be fired to the maximum extent, to the maximum horizontal range? We are willing to find out the value of angle. We are willing to find out the value of theta. So we have seen that, or what is the maximum value of sine 2 theta? The maximum value of sine 2 theta is 1. So we substitute the value, right? And we got this equation. So let's see the next slide. So the equation has been reduced to R is equal to V naught square upon G. This is the value of R max one. Okay, R is equal to V naught square into one upon G. One means nothing. So just neglect this one. Okay, now still the question is there. What is the value of theta? Okay, at what angle should the ball or the, the body will move for them to go to maximum extent? So let's see over here. For the maximum range, we have sine two uh, theta is equal to one. We also know from, uh, if, if you have your calculator, you can check it, the maximum value of sine 90 is one. Okay, so we, here we have two equations, sine two theta is equal to one and sine 90 is equal to one. The right sides of both of these equations are same. Right? So right is equal to right, it means left equal to left. 
So that is why we are writing here sine 2 theta is equal to sine 90. And if we reduce it, it will become 2, 2 theta is equal to 90. What is our task right now? We are trying to find out the value of the angle and the value of angle comes out to be 45 degree. So when a ball, when a, when a projectile, uh, like missile, like a stone, like shell, like fire, or any other thing, like javelin, like short put, is fired at an angle of 45 degree, it will go to the maximum extent. Uh, if it's not 45, like 60, 30, 40, it will not go to the maximum value. As you can see in this diagram, If, I, if you are kicking it at an angle of 50 degree, it will fall nearer to you, 30 degree, 60 degree, 75 degree. But if you kick it at 45 degree, then this one, then it is going to the maximum value. Okay. So, what is your homework assignment number two? Practice the derivation of maximum height, range, and maximum range.